Sorry. I didn't see you come in. So these are the X-Real Airs, which were originally released in 2022, and I was actually one of the first YouTubers to really bring attention to this product. And I was also one that I was really excited about when it was first released, since there just really wasn't anything like it on the market, and now we're in 2024, so a couple years later, and we now have things like the Apple Vision Pro, which are starting to be released, and you might ask, is this product still relevant? Well, I think for some people, absolutely. The first thing to be aware of is that this product is not going to replace something like the Vision Pro. Obviously, there is no competition. The Vision Pro will blow this out of the water, but for almost 10 times the price, you'd kind of expect that. So for one, this device requires you to be tethered to whatever device you're using by USB-C. Along the same lines, the Airs also are not standalone, so you are going to need a host device to get any functionality out of them. Which brings me to my three primary use cases. So my first use case, which is actually the original reason why I picked these up in the first place, was gaming on the Steam Deck. So I have the original 512 gigabyte deck, and I wanted the option to have a really large virtual OLED monitor when I have to take a flight or do something like that. For that particular purpose, these work pretty well. The image really pops out at you, as you'd expect from pretty much any OLED display on the market, and it gives you more than enough screen real estate to work with. Unfortunately though, since the Steam Deck only has one USB-C port, and the Airs need to have a fully featured USB-C port with DisplayPort alt mode functionality. Generally speaking, you can't play the Steam Deck while plugged in at the same time, which is a really, really big downfall of these. Um, there are some devices on the market that you can get to expand the Steam Deck's one port into two ports, one with alt mode and one with uh, charging capability, but they're very hard to come by, and also if you do find one, they're very expensive. So overall, it's kind of a bit of a frustrating thing and a big downer as far as the use cases for this, especially considering that the Steam Deck, at some points, if the battery gets low enough, can cause these to shut off or malfunction because the Steam Deck diverts power to itself rather than to external uh, devices such as this. So just be aware of that, that you want to play pretty much with a full battery and, um, you know, in some cases things can get a little bit funky, but that's just the quirks of the Steam Deck in general. I mean, even if you're using like the dock or something like that, it can get a little bit finicky from time to time. But before I move on, if you are like myself and you wear prescription lenses, I would highly recommend a longtime partner of the channel, the VR Optician, for picking up some high quality Zeiss crafted lenses with the option for blue blocking or standard prescription inserts. If you'd like to learn more, you can watch this video right here. And you can also, if you want to purchase these from this video, you can go ahead to the links in the description and you'll get 10% off of your entire order. So that's a really great deal. Thank you, VR Optician, for being a very amazing partner of the channel for so long. So back to the video. My second use case for these is actually my most common use case, which is watching movies on my iPad Pro. So since these function as any normal external display, you can enjoy your movies on a much more visually impressive screen than the iPad alone, especially if you're traveling. So you're going to be getting roughly the equivalent of an 80 inch diagonal on widescreen content at a normal viewing distance of approximately six feet. So the equivalent display would probably be like an 86 inch TV or like maybe a 90 inch TV at about six feet. So they advertise like 120 inches. It's not really that. Um, you have to read the fine print that they say at like 12 feet, uh, which is much further than a lot of people are used to viewing their content. So just be aware of that, that uh, the marketing is correct, but it's somewhat misleading. But I know that some people have complained about the screen size. And like I said, it's really not that big of a problem. You know, you're not getting a VR headset. So, you know, if you're expecting VR quality uh, screen size, like, you know, having a 300 inch TV or a thousand inch TV or something ridiculous like that, you're obviously not going to have that with these since they are just glasses. You know, they fit over your face. There's a finite place for you to even have a display in these. So 
you pretty much get the biggest display that you're going to get, physically speaking. So the last way that I use this is for productivity on my Mac. So the Nebula beta app is still, as it suggests, in beta, but it works absolutely fantastically, and they finally addressed my biggest grievance with the app by allowing you to actually adjust the refresh rate of the displays explicitly. So in my original video where I discussed the Nebula app, I commented that windows with predominantly white backgrounds would flicker so much that I would end up getting a headache, and it basically made the app completely useless for me. I'm pleased to report, though, that they've fully fixed this problem, and now you won't have any issues whatsoever as long as you choose the 95 hertz refresh rate. This completely eliminates any visible flicker, but unfortunately, as I had mentioned in that video, the Nebula app is still not available for Windows, so if you are a PC user, unfortunately, you're still going to have to wait. But I think for productivity, these things are pretty great, especially if you're a traveler, since you can have up to three virtual monitors, and you can even black out your Mac screen while you're working, so that we can work in your own private environment without people looking over your shoulder and seeing what kinds of things you're working on. So that's a really, really nice thing about these. And they're super lightweight, so you can pretty much just throw them in any bag, and it's not going to add much weight to you. Finally, I wanted to wrap up by mentioning that these right here are the OG Airs. A lot has changed since these were released. My Airs are still branded as Nreal, but since they changed their name to Xreal, that's a bit of a difference. And they even released a V2 and a V2 Pro. So if you'd like to pick a pair up, I'll be leaving some links down in the description. If you want to pick some up, please do use those links as they will help to support the channel a little bit. But the main difference between the V2 and the V2 Pro is that the Pro version has electrochromic shades. Rather than including this external shade uh, on the front of the originals, like this, so you have these transparent um, glasses here with a little bit of shading by default, and then you can put this on and completely black them out. The Pros are nice in that you can completely black them out electrochromically, so you don't need to have this thing uh, sitting in your pocket or sitting in uh, the case anymore. So that's a really nice thing. And it's pretty cool. It's one less thing to keep track of. The pros also do cost a little bit extra, but you only you can decide whether or not that's worth it for you. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, definitely like, comment, share, all the things. And if you want to keep up with everything going on around here, please do subscribe and help us to reach our goal of 1,000 subscribers. And I will see you guys in the next video. Later.